All right, Rohit, we're a minute in. Should we sure. uh, should we get this party on the road? Sure, let's do that. So, uh, the show again. on the road, party started. I'm mixing exactly. my metaphors. <laughs> uh, although I have to keep my voice down, as you can see, I'm in a library. Um, but <laughs> thanks everyone for coming to our webinar. Uh, this is a joint presentation between Matter 365 and Gravity Legal. Uh, we're very excited to be able to uh, present to you today the integration that we've built between uh, our two systems. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Rohit Parikh. I'm the VP of Customer Success here at Matter 365, and I'm joined uh, with Dan Lear, who's the resident legal mind as well as head of partner partnerships and marketing at Gravity Legal. Uh, and if you're involved in Twitter or law Twitter at all, you've certainly have seen many of Dan's numerous tweets over the years. Uh, and he's been very busy digitizing the practice of law for many years as well. So for the, this today's webinar, Dan's going to take us through uh, some of the why of accepting credit cards and bank transfers makes sense for uh, you know law firms and lawyers. And then at the end, we'll get we'll go or not the end towards the end. We'll go through a quick tour of how uh, we can use Gravity Legal uh, payments and how we've integrated into Matter Three Sixty Five. So take it away, Dan. Awesome. Thanks, Rohit. Uh, please don't hold anything uh, that you've seen on Twitter against me. Oh, and of course now, I'll just go from here. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I got to do the obligatory. Can you see my screen? Yeah, um, I think we can see it. Awesome. All right. So with, uh, with the title, like a new approach to getting paid and all the recent buzz in the news around cryptocurrency, uh, you might think that we're going to dive in on Coinbase or Bitcoin or something like that. But Actually, and, and let me pause. That's a super sexy topic. I, at some point, I'd love to dive into it. We may have some content coming, but I actually want to throw a statistic at you, and that's this one. Oh, if I can get this working, there we go. Uh, and and th that is twenty-five percent. And this is the the percentage, according to our research, of law firms that currently accept electronic payments, such as credit cards, debit cards, and ACH. And so while it's true that crypto may be the future or even the present uh, for a large percentage of people, within legal, there's still lots of opportunity for lawyers and law firms to better use tools that are right at their fingertips. And so when we talk today about a new approach to getting paid, and when we launch into the integration that we're really excited to show you today, one of the things that I think is most powerful is that these are tools that don't require an understanding of Bitcoin or uh, blockchain. Like these are tools that are available to lawyers today that can have a meaningful impact on, as we'll show, their firms uh, right away. And I think that's really exciting. As Rohit mentioned, my name is Dan Lear. I'm head of marketing and partnerships at Gravity Legal. I'm also a licensed attorney here in the in the state of Washington, where I'm uh, where I'm based in Seattle, and did practiced uh, technology transactions work for a number of years. And Rohit did a great job of sort of teeing this up and and getting a set for how I want to approach this webinar today. And I want to really circle around or focus on this question of why. And I wanna throw not five whys, but three whys at you. Why electronic payments? Why gravity legal? And then why should you care about this integration that we're so excited about? Um, and before I go any further, let me also mention that uh, I'm just gonna plow ahead, but we'll definitely leave time for questions at the end. So if you have questions as we're going along, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, Rohit will uh, keep an eye on them and my colleague Emery should be joining us as well. And so uh, he'll be keeping an eye uh, on them too, uh, but we'll definitely get to those questions at the end, but I'll just plow ahead and then we'll pick them up as, as we round out. So those are the three questions that we're gonna anchor our discussion around today. And I wanna just dive right in and ask the question, why electronic payments? And there's really a, a pretty basic and primary reason. And, and that is that cash flow matters particularly for small lawyer for, for small law firms and solo lawyers. On our gravity legal platform for those firms that do accept the electronic payments, we say we see that the average time that a payment is outstanding on our platform is a mere 14 days. And I, Rohit, I'm sure this is true for you. I talk with lawyers all the time 
who have AR cycles of 30 days, 60 days, even 90 days. And the ability to get your cash <laughs> now, as the uh, as the the settlement folks on late night TV say, for a law firm that is really powerful and and really meaningful. And so, the the simple ability to increase your collections and reduce that accounts receivable time is is really important. And not to mention, of course, that uh, we also see that that firms who accept electronic payments also get paid more of what they bill out of what they. Uh, of what they send out to clients, because when you make it easy for clients to pay, when you make it convenient for clients to pay, they're more likely to pay. There's also some real efficiency gains that, that lawyers and firms can get through automated payments and automated accounting. In most cases, an electronic payment comes through with an email or some other kind of notification that just tells you, hey, this is where this money is come from, coming from. And if you're accepting cash or paper checks only, you've got to paste that all together. And so right off of the bat, there's an efficiency that comes with electronic payments just in knowing who paid you and to whom this money is attributable. Well, if you go a step further and tie those payments into a practice management system like Matter 365, or even better, tie it back into your accounting system, uh, just as Matter 365 does with uh, 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 QuickBooks Online, you're getting even better data that goes right from, from where you're getting paid all the way through your practice management system and down into your books, making the reconciliation challenges that you have, making the accounting challenges that you have much less significant. And then finally, reducing the risk of in-person payments. And, and of course, this last year has shown us that there's a risk in, as, as I've been saying, exchanging filthy lucre uh, in, the, in, in, in the form of paper currency, getting into a physical place with someone to, to pass paper back and forth. Um, and the ability to get electronic payments helps to reduce that risk. But I even want to sort of take the level and the notion of risk up a level and suggest to lawyers and law firms that those firms who were stuck accepting paper uh, currency during the last year were much more vulnerable to, to kind of the supply shock that our economy felt, or not even the supply shock, but just the shock that our economy felt um, with the lockdown. And those firms who were getting electronically paid didn't have to worry about the logistics of getting physically into the same place with their clients. We had a we had a an, a client early on in the pandemic, a prospective a prospect who called us and said, "I'm still getting paid. The client is still happy with my work, but they're sending all of our checks to a lockbox that because of the lockdown I can't get access to. So everything was working for the firm, but all of the paper checks were going to a place that the person that the, the lawyer couldn't get access to. So there's a level of risk that 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 is introduced for firms who don't have the flexibility to accept the electronic payments that I think increasingly, uh, not to mention the fact that a bunch, of, a large number of young people don't know what checks are and very few carry cash. So it, there's a level of risk that, that, that gets introduced for firms who don't accept the electronic payments that I think is, is puts them at a significant disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis their competitors who do accept the electronic payments. So then why would you work with Gravity Legal? Well, I've got five reasons and let's just go ahead and launch right into them. The first reason is compliance. Uh, again, Rohit and I are both lawyers. We both appreciate that um, often from our colleagues in the bar, the first question that we get is, can I do this? Uh, can I accept the electronic payments? And I still get this question even after credit cards have, are so ubiquitous in our society today. And the first thing I wanna say is that Gravity Legal was built for lawyers with the rules of professional conduct in mind. And in doing that, there's, there's really only one, and again, I'll touch on PCI, but there's really only one thing that firms need to be aware of and be cognizant of in accepting electronic payments. And that is if they elect to accept electronic payments into their trust account. And this is because the, the way that payment processors typically get paid is that they take a portion of the amount of money that they're moving. So if, the, if there's a $2,000 uh, payment from a credit card into a trust account, they typically take around 3% of that. And so the, the amount of money that gets paid into the trust account, if you will, would theoretically be less than the amount that was asked for. Well, as you know, that $2,000 is not the firm's money. 
And there's, therefore, as bar associations have decided, which is not something I'm going to argue with, the option or the decision to offer electronic payments, that's a, and the cost associated with that, that's a business cost of the firms. That's not something that the, um, that, that, uh, that, well, before a firm can use those expenses to pay for their, their the, use those funds to pay for their business expenses, it has to be earned. And so you, uh, if, you, if you use a typical processor and they take that money out, you've actually taken the client's money and you're potentially guilty of converting client funds. And so that's a long way of saying that firms who accept electronic payments into their trust account need to ensure that the fees are being taken out of their operating account. And that's something that we absolutely do. We also protect the trust account by ensuring that if there's a chargeback against any trust account funds, that those that chargeback fee comes out of the operating account and similarly an NSF fee for any ACH payments. PCI is a bit of a red herring. I don't wanna minimize compliance, but if you're working with a reputable payment processor, they're gonna handle PCI. This is payment card industry standard security for you. And they may ask you that, which is what we do, to, to answer a quick questionnaire uh, once a year to ensure that you're PCI compliant. But this is something that firms, I think, rightly are concerned about, but it's something that actually a lot of payment processors use to either, again, we'll get into this later, charge an additional fee or otherwise scare lawyers. When PCI compliance, again, if you're working with a reputable processor, is a box that you can check off pretty easily. Uh, in your mind of, of, of things to worry about or not worry about. Another reason to work with Gravity Legal is to avoid getting ripped off. And we've just written a bunch on our blog about this, so I'm not going to launch into this in too great a detail, but I do want to mention two ways that payment processors often rip lawyers and, frankly, sometimes businesses off. The first is a monthly fee. And I've just gone through this whole discussion of how payment processors make money, specifically by taking a portion of the transaction. Well, if they're getting paid that way, why are they then charging you kind of coming and going? And payment processors who charge a monthly fee are really just kind of double dipping. Uh, we don't charge a monthly fee. We don't think that, that that's the way that, that processors should work. We're already making our money. And so that's one reason, again, to work with Gravity Legal. Another way, another reason is uh, to avoid what we call tiered pricing or really just kind of in the pricing landscape in general. We offer a flat fee for both our credit card processing or our card processing in general and our ACH. But a lot of processors do what's called tiered pricing. And what they do in tiered pricing is that they create these buckets into which different cards fall and they associate different uh, payment percentages, different costs with each of these buckets. And then they'll go to a firm and say, hey, for, for the lower bucket, which is usually the standard bucket, we'll only charge you 1.9%. Uh, and then for these higher buckets, we'll charge you more, but this, you know, this lower bucket is for standard cards. And most firms assume, oh, well, my clients are standard. You know, standard sounds pretty general. I assume most of my, you know, most of my cards are going to fall into that first standard bucket, and therefore I'm going to pay 1.9%. The, the problem is, is that it's the payment processor who determines what these, the contours of these buckets. And they, of course, have an incentive to put a bunch of different types uh, or to put those more common standard cards into the more expensive buckets. And it ends up just being this really manipulative process. And so we don't, we don't do that. We give you a flat fee that's transparent and easy to see. And so you always understand how much you're, you're getting charged. Another way, actually, that payment processors often obfuscate or, or, or rip uh, lawyers off is uh, by sending incomprehensible statements, in inscrutable payment processing statements. And we've tried really hard to make ours as clear as possible. And I wanna just highlight one piece of information that we provide right at the top in bold, which is our effective rate. Because as I mentioned, if you are a firm that's offering both ACH and cards, those rates are different. And what's really helpful we found for a firm is understanding, okay, across all of the money that I'm sending through the platform, what am I paying in total? And so this effective rate gives a lot of clarity to a firm about here's how much I'm paying. Another thing that we often see firms do is that, or that we see processors do is that they'll send a processing statement two months late. So you're getting your June processing statement in August. 
And that makes it also really hard for you to remember what happened in June and go back and put everything back together. We bill, we always send our statements the month after, we try to make them as clear as possible and we provide you this effective rate. And this effective rate is kind of important. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute here because the other thing that we've done in order to help you save money, that's number four, is that we've integrated ACH really tightly, bank transfers, e-check really tightly into our, into our system. And as a result of it being simply there, you can see I've got that red box around it. We see about, for those firms that we have on our platform who offer both cards and ACH, so who just make these two different methods of payment available, we see about 20% to 30% of a firm's volume go to ACH, simply just because it's there. And as I mentioned, cards are 2.95%, whereas ACH is 0.35%, so it's an order of magnitude less expensive. If you can push 20 to 30% of your payments volume through ACH, that's gonna reduce your overall that uh, effective rate pretty dramatically. So that's one way we help firms save money. We've also built the technology that enables firms to surcharge on their cards, uh, on credit cards in specific. Now, again, not every firm can do this, Rohit. I know you're in Canada, so we've got any Canadian folks with us. Unfortunately, it's prohibited in Canada. It's also prohibited in a small number, like a half dozen states in the United States. But uh, for those states where it is permitted and those firms who cho choose to, to do it, and again, not, for, not every firm is into this, but for those who do, this can reduce your, your processing costs dramatically. We see 60, 80, sometimes 90% uh, that firms are able to reduce their processing costs by shifting these costs to their clients. And then finally, the other way that we help firms save money is that we give them the option to use, to offer different payment methods in different situations. We give them a lot of flexibility. So if you have a client who pays a large amount of money really regularly, and it's one that you feel comfortable simply saying to them, hey, if you wouldn't mind, would you just pay me via bank transfer? You have the ability to toggle both credit and debit cards off and just send them an invoice that has bank transfer enabled so that, that those uh, clients only pay via bank transfer and therefore you're able to leverage that lower ACH cost. On the other end of the spectrum, maybe you have a, a practice that has a high volume of low dollar amount payments and you just want to make it as easy as possible for people to pay, and you don't really want to, you're even happy to eat the fees in order to, to improve your collection. But we give you, you the ability to, to toggle those all on. And there's lots of other creative ways that we've seen firms use these different payment methods in order to kind of strategically shift their fees or lower their costs. Reason number five to work with Gravity Legal is integrations. We are the only legal specific payment processor with the Zapier integration. I know there are lots of firms out there who use Zapier to tie a lot of their systems together. We also have a full integration with QuickBooks that's leveraged by the Matter 365 uh, integration as well. And then finally, the reason that we're here today is that we also integrate with Matter 365. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, but we're really excited about that. And, and we're really excited that We've built an ecosystem that enables firms to use the technologies that they have in, uh, in, in integrating that with their, their payment processing. And that's, that's really why we love Matter365 is because they're the only uh, practice management system that's fully integrated with the Microsoft Office Suite, which I know uh, having been a lawyer and having watched legal technology evolve over the last few years, um, <laughs> lawyers and law firms use and love. So just a few final comments before we launch into the demo and some questions. Why should you be considering the Matter 365 and Gravity Legal integration? So you might think that if I were asked the question about who's the best payment processor for a law firm, <laughs> that I would be biased and, and answer uh, Gravity Legal. And spoiler alert, that's actually not my answer. And, and you know, firms might be thinking, or you might be thinking, well, should I go with the, the processor who has the lowest rate or the best customer service or the firm that, or the processor that best understands legal? And honestly, my answer to this question is that the best payment processor for your firm is the processor that's integrated with, with the systems that you already use. 
because the modest amount of money that a lower cost processor might save you will be dwarfed by the efficiency gains that you get from having an integrated system that includes payments. So that's why we're really pleased to be that partner for Matter 365. And then the final reason that we, uh, that we really are bullish about this integration is uh, the way that Matter 365 views the practice of law. And I stole this from Rohit. He said this as we were um, working on the integration. He said, I think that the practice of law can be distilled into six words, get clients, do work and get paid. And as we looked at this opportunity to partner with them, we thought, well, you know what? Matter 365 already gives you a way to manage and keep track of your clients. It gives you a place to manage and, ma and, and, and track your time and work and facilitate either if you're a solo or across your firm. And we said, well, we can plug in here and really, I think, use what I think is this really elegant, really smart, really simple way of thinking about the practice of law, provide a platform that does that, again, with the Microsoft 360 ecosystem, which firms already use, um, in a really powerful and meaningful way. And so we were super excited to, to kind of check that final box and be that partner for Matter 365. And so, yes, it would be super fun and sexy to do a deep dive into Bitcoin or, or, or blockchain. But if firms adopt electronic payments, if they think about using a processor like us that, that checks a lot of those boxes, and if they, I think are, they're open to this integration that allows firms to, to kind of check these boxes um, pretty simply, uh, there's a lot of gains to be had simply by using the tools that firms have. Um, so Rohit, that is uh, all I've got. So I'm gonna turn the time back over to you for our demo. All right, so uh, I will take you now through the process of how we've actually integrated uh, Gravity Legal Payments uh, into Matter 365. So again, the ubiquitous, let me know if you can see my screen. Um, so. For those of you who are who, who are used to using Matter 365, your existing clients, this will come as no shock to you. On our Matter dashboard, we have now got this new button, uh, which is the Gravity Legal Request a Deposit. Uh, we'd always had the deposit fund, which allows you then to track payments uh, that you're getting, whether coming in by check or by cash, but now you can actually make the request directly from the Matter dashboard or uh, on the actual, in the accounting page under the trust accounting, we have next to any of existing trust accounts, you can request a deposit as well. So this does require you to open a new trust account so we can set all the proper uh, systems up in QuickBooks uh, and in our app, but then you can actually request a deposit. So uh, let's look at matter 1290 North American expansion. We have a current trust balance of $3. That's not gonna cover a lot. So if you wanna actually request a deposit, all you have to do is click this, request a deposit, we're going to launch an email. Uh, it's automatically going to pull the recipients of whoever your client is and their email address. I'm actually going to put my own in here so I can show you what it looks like and what the client's going to see. Uh, you can type in additional recipients. Oops, I forgot you have to enter. Uh, if you want to add more people, uh, but otherwise you can just put in, oops, again. I'm usually much better at typing when people aren't looking. Uh, oops, again. It's my retainer. Uh, once all that is done, I have to actually put in an amount as well. Otherwise, it won't go over to send and you just hit the blue send button. So it's gonna take a moment because now we're uh, reaching into Gravity Legal to pull out the pr proper payment link and everything else and then sending that link off to, uh, to your client. So now the notification was sent. So I'm gonna look in my inbox and there it is. Uh, and so this, when you set up your Gravity Legal site, or sorry, on the Gravity Legal site, your account, you can set up what the email is going to look like. You can put your logo in. You know, this is a development account, so it doesn't look very pretty. But uh, this is what your client is going to see when you make the request. They get the link. Uh, they can click to pay online. Now it's going to launch them onto the Gravity Legal 
payment processing site. Uh, but you can see you again can brand this for your own law firm. It's going to show you which who's requesting the money the amount is. Uh, and as Dan mentioned, you can actually select payment debit card or do a bank transfer. They have the ability to put that in there. I'm going to again just put in my information so you can see what the receipt looks like. Um, And then I'm going to copy some dummy information. And then hit complete payment. <clears throat> so now that we're sending the, the credit card information through the Gravity Legal Payment Processor. It's going to charge the credit card uh, of the client that they just put in. And then when the payments come in, there's gonna be a notification. There's gonna be a receipt sent and I'll show you what that receipt looks to. So again, this is what your client is seeing when they pay it. And this is the email receipt they're gonna get. It's gonna say you got the payment. It's gonna have a transaction ID, uh, letting you know what card it was and who got paid. Um, so that's all great. But then how does it look in matter 365? Again, if we go back here, so I put it into 1290. Uh, if we reload this page, you'll see that that trust balance is going to increase from 3,000 to 1,003. Uh, again, it usually takes a couple seconds for it to load because we're, we're doing a constant two-way synchronization with QuickBooks uh, to make sure that all the information that you see on Matter 365 is the exact information that you see in QuickBooks. So there we go, 1290, we can see the $1,000 has already been put in. If I were to go into uh, QuickBooks in the proper sub-liability account, uh, again, right it had three dollars if i reload this now we're going to see that it's going to have shown that one thousand dollar deposit um if it doesn't kick me out no it's all good and there you can see uh the thousand dollars put in on today's date so again as dan was saying the the best payment processing system you can have is the one you're actually going to use it's the one that fits in with your system and we've really tried to make it super simple and easy keeping with generally matter 365 principles is we want to make it so easy even a lawyer could use it um so it's a when you have a trust request you click the button your client falls through hits the buttons and then everything gets automatically put into your quickbooks it's automatically put into matter 365 and then you can start uh, charging against that trust uh, immediately um, so there are a couple uh, things that I, else i wanted to show you uh, what we've set up in our settings so if you are interested in gravity legal uh, if you go to your main settings in your Matter 365 account, you're going to see this new Gravity Legal Integration button here. If you click on that, if you already have it, you're, well, because I've already set this up, you're going to see a uh, sign up with Gravity Legal, or you can hit another button saying connect to Gravity Legal. So if once you have a Gravity Legal account, you hit the connect button, it's going to ask you to log in. Uh, super simple and easy to say when we have our QuickBooks set up. Uh, or if you want to sign up, you just click on the sign up to Gravity Legal. Uh, because they are doing payment processing, there are a lot of uh, financial regulations that they have to deal with. So it's not going to be instant access to Gravity Legal. It may take a couple of days for your application to be approved, uh, but they're going to work with you uh, as quickly as they can to get that done. Uh, the other feature that uh, unfortunately I can't show you today, but uh, as you know, when you first uh, develop, or sorry, when you first send off invoices, uh, you have what we're, let me back up a second. The other part of the integration that we're building in is payment, not just of trust deposits or retainer payments, but also payment of invoices. Uh, I can't show you this today because we haven't got this set up completely, but it should be up and ready by next week uh, that we're actually putting a gravity legal payment on every invoice that you send out through the system. So as you know, in matter 365, you generate your invoices here, you sync them to QuickBooks and then send them from QuickBooks there will be a gravity legal integrate or gravity legal link sent with those invoices so they can click in and pay it the same way we just showed you uh, and all those payments we mark against the invoices in quickbooks and you'll see the payments reflected here through our integration with uh with quickbooks as well and so uh that's everything that i wanted to show uh on this side so i'm going to stop my sharing and i think uh at this point um if there, I think there were a couple questions that I saw that came in. Yeah, um, we do have a couple. And actually, uh, folks, you might have also jo noticed that Emery joined. He's uh, my colleague at uh, Gravity Legal and uh, 
again, uh, Rohit's statement about so easy a lawyer could can use it. He's also our payments expert. Um, I, you know, I, I'm the, I'm the, well, I, I was going to say I'm the brains, he's the face, or I'm the face, he's the brains, but uh, he's, the, he's the face and the brains. And we do have a question here, Emery, that I thought you'd be uh, ideally suited to answer. Um, I've got someone uh, saying, the question is, whether this integration will support multi-currency transactions. We have QuickBooks with a US trust under one company in QuickBooks, a Canadian uh, trust, a Canadian dollar trust under another company, and a US general and a Canadian general account, both under a single QuickBooks company. Um, is that something that, uh, that we can support? And maybe this is a follow up with us later and we can see if we can help you. Well, yeah, and I think in, in and I remember Charles had asked this question to us uh, once before, and so just so you're aware, Emery and 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 Dan and everybody else, uh, the the e integration between Matter three sixty five and QuickBooks only allows you to link to one trust account or one uh, general account, mm -hmm. uh, and so that was a bit of an issue. But I think leaving aside the Matter three sixty five integration, can Gravity Legal support this multi currency multi account? system uh we can we can only have one uh one currency per account uh per gravity legal account so if you wanted to process um uh, in uh say canadian dollars um and in u.s dollars um the clients that we have that are doing that now have to uh, unfortunately they have to have two different gravity legal accounts um one uh you know, one for each of those those currencies. So I'd have to think a little bit more about the the exact setup, and maybe I could get back. Um, uh, um, yeah, I can get you Charles' more, contact more, information. More information. So. We can so. Up. Mm. Oh, you're on mute, Dan. Yep, this is where Bitcoin may come in helpful, Charles. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll talk later. Uh, there are a few more questions in the q and I'm, I'm mindful that we're, we're over, so if folks need to drop, feel free, but there's at least one of these I know we can tick off. Uh, Crystal asks, can you accept e-checks as well? Absolutely, that's uh, the ACH piece that I was talking about. Um, so that's definitely something that we can do and that the, the integration supports. Um, let's see, we have clients internationally and need to be able to accept payments in US dollars from clients from, in an, from an international bank. Is that an issue? So, Emory, this is cr credit cards internationally is not an issue. Um, for ACH, I believe we only support the U.S. right now. Is that right? Yes, a ACH is a is a U.S. bank to U.S. bank system. So, uh, unfortunately, both the firm and the um, uh, and the client need to need to have a U.S bank to to make that transfer so right now the only option for doing that would be through a credit card uh crystal asked about crypto uh not 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 yet but again like i said i we, we feel like there's so many gains to be had from uh from firms just accepting electronic payments um but uh good to know that that's that's of interest and it's definitely something we've thought about so um watch, watch this space potentially for the future um, Kristen had a question. Can you set up a reminder for a request? Uh, I thought, well, so, I don't think, oh, go ahead, go ahead. So uh, under the current system, so our V1 that we have the integrate, uh, that we have, uh, that I showed you where you're actually requesting a retainer uh, via email, uh, we don't have that reminder uh, ability turned on yet, but that is something that we are looking at to do. Um, but I, I, the other thing I didn't mention, and I should mention that it, once you get a Gravity Legal account and you actually log into their system, it is much more sophisticated than the simple little uh, two, two button things that I'm showing you here. Um, so maybe uh, Emery and Dan, you can talk about how, you know, once a request is made or what other systems or what other requests can't be made directly from the Gravity Legal site if they're looking for recurring payments or uh, reminders. Yeah, that was one of the other questions, Kristen. You asked about recurring scheduled payments. That's absolutely something that that we support on the Gravity Legal side. Um, we call them subscriptions, but they can be either subscriptions or installment type payments. Um, 
that information currently wouldn't sync back to Matter 365 because you'd be running it solely out of our system. But again, it's good to know that this is what folks are interested in because as we think about longer term, um, yeah, and Crystal just asked that same question, recurring monthly payments for, for his monthly retainers. Absolutely. Um, that's definitely something we can do. Again, currently that information wouldn't get sent back into Matter 365, but that's absolutely something that you can do on our platform. Uh, well, it, it would actually get, yeah. it's right, actually yeah. would get back into Matter 365 because if you're setting up those recurring payments uh, going into your trust account, as opposed, uh, as opposed to just generally going into oh, your operating account, right. Right. then that will show up in Matter 365 because we're, we're reading that information from QuickBooks. Oh, that's right. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, but they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to set it up in matter 365 no, that, no, set yeah. it up in that's right yeah they would do it on the, the gravity legal portal but they you would but see it would those show up it's come through yeah cool that's great yeah i'd forgotten about that piece um so i think we've answered all of the questions the last thing i, I actually meant for folks to do and and uh um oh we had one more question while i'm pulling this up i'm going to share my screen everyone uh emory and uh rohit do you want to um do you want to answer that last question? Can you guys see that? Sure. Yeah. So this, go ahead. Oh, this for um, creating a, a custom payment link. Um, uh, you can, uh, I'll, I'll let Rohit speak to Matter 365, but you can definitely do this in, in Gravity Legal and have um, with the new um, integration coming, uh, enhancement coming with QuickBooks um, in the next couple of days, you'll be able to sync uh, create that payment page of a specific amount. Um, it can be of a specific amount or of a variable amount if you want to give the clients the opportunity to type in with what they would like to pay. And then that payment um, will get marked in uh, QuickBooks um, after after that, that payment's complete. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, speaking directly to Crystal and Kristen, because uh, they're both from the same firm, uh, I think what actually might make sense is for for you and Ian and, uh, you know, Crystal, uh, to for all of us to get on a demo with Gravity Legal and to, to have me involved as well. Because I think a lot of these questions, if you saw the demo of the Gravity Legal platform itself, uh, a lot of these questions would get resolved and then we can help answer and show you how you can best integrate that into Matter 365. So that was the reason. This. Yeah, that was the reason that I wanted to pull this last slide up yeah. and just tell folks how they can get a hold of us. Um, you can find out more about the integration at gravity-legal.com slash M365, as you see. And then folks can reach out to me. And again, if you've got Rohit's email, you can go to him as well. But here's my email address if folks want to reach out. Um, I, I think that's all we had. Again, I'm mindful of the time. Uh, we love the questions, but we've also gone gone over, which is great. So, uh, yeah, And, and I, if there are any other questions, uh, if you want to reach out to me again, my email is rohit at matter365.com. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions on, on gravity legal integration or anything else, uh, as always. Um, but yeah, if you for Crystal in particular, if you guys want to set up a demo with, with have me on the line as well, I'm happy to set that up. Yeah, Crystal says, Rohit, can you please sketch us with our firm, you and Gravity, please? <laughs> so uh, we'll look forward to talking to you soon, Crystal. Yeah, we'll set it up. Um, otherwise, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we hope this was helpful. Again, this is where you can find out more uh, about uh, uh, our, our integration. We're excited to see it in the world and we appreciated having you folks with us today. All right, thanks everyone.